starting with a little video tour today of the garden. This is the rose urn from Community Seed and Feed in East Alton. Tons of cool concrete and they make it right there so it's wholesale prices. There's no other reason to get them anywhere else. So I have some nasturtiums in here which are edible flower and leaf. A couple different varieties. This is uh, Black Eyed Susan Vine. Some uh, short um, sunflowers. A little bit of weeds from the horse manure. These are two different types of tomato plants. They're weeping cherry tomatoes and they are determinate tomatoes. So determinate tomatoes means they only grow to a certain size and they bear all their fruit at once. So if you have the regular tomatoes that grow and grow and grow and you have to stake them up and all that, um, I find that they're putting on a lot more plant growth instead of fruit production. So these are just two plants. I um, grew both of them from seed in my winter jugs. Let's see, I think I still have one over here. So these, this winter sowing method, you just take a milk jug, cut it, sow your seeds, duct tape it back on, and you can do that in the middle of winter. Serves as a little greenhouse, and surprisingly, they live. I had a few other things planted in here, like some of this um, black-eyed Susan vine, but it's kind of getting overtaken by the tomatoes, which is not bad, and a little color. On this end of the bed, I've got strawberries underneath that have been overtaken by these short sunflowers, which I really love. These tall sunflowers here that are volunteers tend to get blown over in the wind. So those are staked, but a good strong windstorm, especially once they bloom, they're gonna to be toppled over, which is aggravating. So I've got some miniature sunflowers started here for, um, I've been asked to help decorate for Vacation Bible School for uh, the program this summer called Hay Day. So I'm going to grow some of these and I hope they're blooming by mid-June. If not, it will be a fun experiment. So again, strawberries under here. These are short sunflowers, as I said. Tons of big old onions and it'll be another month or so before those are ready to harvest. Some eggplant here that's growing up. Another one here. Tons of zucchinis on the vine. I have yellow here. And I have green on that side. They're all coming on very fast. We are leaving for a week on Sunday to go to Eminence to take our kids trail riding. So I hope whoever's babysitting our garden, probably you, Jan, um, will enjoy the produce. If anybody needs or wants anything, let me know. I always grow too much. So intermixed are some dahlias. That's a dahlia. That's a dahlia. I've just pinched off the central leaders from a lot of them to promote bushiness instead of being so tall that they fall over. I do have a lot of them staked. These are nice little wire stakes that help hold them up. Pinch that. Pinching that central piece off creates it to be a little more bushy. So what is that? That looks like a cucumber beetle. So gonna have to take care of that. Maybe some diatomaceous earth. This is a ground bed that I'm working on, filling up, making it taller all the way around, adding soil over time. But for now I have, um, these are all zinnias. Um, really like a bubblegum pink, a purple, and a lime green, which I think will look really pretty together. And then some more of the miniature sunflowers, which I bought a pack of a thousand seeds, and it's super nice to be able to poke them in everywhere. I plant them about every two weeks or so in order to um, have a succession bloom pretty much year round. So a bunch more of the determinate tomatoes along this edge, which means they're only going to get to be a certain height. I am going to put some cages around them just to help prevent breakage of the stems. This is my one 
rhubarb plant. If you know my grandma Martha, she used to make rhubarb cake, which I'm planning to do. Um, this plant is new this year, so I probably won't harvest it until next spring. So tons more zinnias, got some green beans in here. I brought, bought from plants. Some of them have green beans on them. Um, do better with seeds. Usually I plant green beans every two weeks also, which helps have green beans all year long instead of having so many at once that you have to can them. Here is cucumbers. Growing up, the this is a cattle panel. Some people call them ranch panels. Cattle panel arches with T-post. Super easy to put in. Great to add vertical gardening, you know, because I don't have enough garden beds. Uh, it seems like you never have enough when you're a gardener. And then these are indeterminate tomatoes. So your typical tomatoes that are gonna be trained up this trellis and hopefully grow all the way over the top and then I can pick tomatoes without bending down. I also have a watermelon in there as well. Maybe a couple. So over in this bed, more squash. I have different uh, seeds I poke in now and then to make sure I have a succession of that. These are sugar snap peas on the trellises. I planted all those from plants from the garden center. Uh, more dahlias. This is a big dahlia here. And here, they prefer a lot of sun. And every year I think I'm going to devote a bed just to the dahlias. But that doesn't always happen. I tend to plant a bunch of stuff when the bed looks empty, like all these are sunflowers, those miniature ones. I absolutely love. So tons of beautiful sugar snap peas. I use them for lots of things, mostly eating fresh, but can be used for stir fry and stuff. So this is spinach I've already cut and it's a cooler season crop, but because it's so shaded, I can keep cutting it and it comes back each year or each week, whatever, during the season. More onions kind of hidden in here. More sugar snap peas here. Okay, continuing on with the garden tour. I really liked the blooms on these strawberries because they were red, something different. I can't tell you the variety off the top of my head, but I planted those there. Uh, I do have some green beans, I'm trying to make a go of it right here and vining up, um, got that bed pretty well packed. So we'll see if they get enough light to produce. If not, I have lots more uh, planted in other beds. Again, I like to plant the green beans and the sunflowers about every two weeks, and then you have a really nice succession throughout the whole season. So this is a volunteer plant here, uh, sunflower. I have some lettuce left, head lettuce. That's one lettuce right there. And there's a second one behind the sunflower. Uh, we have some pepper plants, jalapeno and green pepper. There's dill here and here. And then this is a new herb. I'll have to look at the tag to tell you what it is that I'd never heard of, so I thought I would try it. And these are not planted. These are not planted because they just got delivered. This is another rose urn, so a total of four. Also this concrete stuff is from Community Feed and Seed. This is my new rose lady. Isn't she gorgeous? I envision her up on a pedestal with all roses growing around her at some point. The hoses you see here are my drip irrigation, which I have lined up, but not in the beds yet. We haven't really needed it. Cabbage, I pulled a ton of lettuce, broccoli, cauliflower that we've already eaten out. So this is Santolina. Great in containers. Smells good. I don't know what I'll do with it yet, but it sure is pretty. So here's the cabbage. Red cabbage is getting there. Once it's done, I'll pull that out and let the tomatoes have some more room. Here's a backed up view of the arch. Won't that look pretty with flowers and cucumbers and tomatoes all growing over the top? Rose lady, so gorgeous, isn't she? Community Seed and Feed in East Alton has all the concrete. That's where I get it all from. 
really great price. Cody's a great person to work with and they even have delivery. Another container here and I have some, what is this? I have a variety of things planted in here, different seeds and stuff, but I have this um, Black Eyed Susan vine that will get really tall, so I kind of need to put a trellis or something in here. This bed is all volunteer cilantro that I've cut back a lot. Cabbage, as you can see. Rosemary. Basil. And all volunteer sunflowers. There's some sage, thyme, chives, winter savory, uh, onions. Big ol' onions this year. This next month they'll be putting on the bulbs. And more squash here. New baby broccoli plants. Hopefully it doesn't get too hot for them. Also some indeterminate tomatoes. And this is celery. Never grown celery before. Saw it at the store. I think these are volunteer flowers that came up. Cosmos maybe. Baby broccoli. Lavender. These are my uh, green beans. Baby green beans coming up that I have poked in. More baby sunflowers. Maybe a little broccoli in there. Uh, this bed I planted March 15th with lettuce, beets, onions, carrots, all kinds of stuff. So baby sunflowers in there and onions, volunteer sunflowers, more tomato or more onions rather, green beans popping in. Oh, look, we've got a little bachelor button blooming here and they're wonderful to reseed themselves. So these are all beets, red beets, which we had roasted beets the other night for dinner. This is what's left of the romaine lettuce, carrots, green, these green beans are a little further along and blooming. This bed is mostly potatoes. The outside row is potatoes, random volunteer sunflowers. These are little lime hydrangeas, potatoes in the middle. This lavender is beautiful. I use my cabbage leaves as mulch to cut down on weeds. So lavender, probably gonna make some lavender simple syrup at some point. Again, lots of potatoes, onions. This is broccoli in the middle. I had hoped would produce something, but it looks like a lot of leaves at this point. So we'll see, it might be too hot for it. Uh, it looks like the potatoes are starting to flower. Right here, blooming. When they bloom, that's when they're putting on their potatoes, the little tubers. So they need extra water at that time. Might be interesting next week when it gets to 100 degrees. And we'll see what we have. This is borage, an herb, beautiful blue stem. This is white, a stilby, done blooming, so it's kind of turned brown instead of white. That's also a stilby. This is a fine line buckthorn, some vertical interest for winter and different seasons. I think I might move those. There's one on each side. I might move those to the corner for more structure. I do believe these are snapdragons. You know, volunteer vines of this and that. Who knows what that is at this point, but a little volunteer. Happy little plantas. And more cucumbers here, tomatoes, cantaloupe, watermelon, all gonna grow up and over the vine here. 